All right, good evening, everybody. It uh, looks like I started live video and people will start trickling in here. I uh, wanted to talk about Tropical Storm Dorian and the things that have been going on today with the storm. It's been a bit of a tumultuous day for the storm in terms of uh, kind of reorganizing and getting its act back together. But I uh, wanted to kind of give an update on what's going on and what it means, what implications it has for the east coast, southeast coast of the United States. Um, as a U.S. A United States impact does look more likely uh, with every passing day that we have as um, Dorian continues to trek northwestward and head toward the area. So to start off here, uh, the first thing you should always do when there's a tropical system active in the Atlantic, you should go over to the National Hurricane Center's website. So just a quick uh, tutorial on how to do that, just go into Google and simply type in NHC and hit enter and then the National Hurricane Center will pop up as the first option there and you can click that and you're led to this home page here where it shows you active storms in the Atlantic Basin and a tropical depression six is ongoing out here no threat to North Carolina or anywhere on the eastern seaboard uh, for now it could impact areas of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland up in Canada but uh, that's not the concern of this video it does play some factor in Dorian's eventual path but the main focus here is a uh, tropical storm Dorian you can hover over for a quick summary you can click this um, for um, more detailed, but you can see the maximum sustained winds a little bit weaker than it was yesterday at 50 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure is down to 1,005 millibars after, oh, excuse me, that's actually what the pressure was, and the hurricane hunters uh, have been in the storm this evening and have found some um, little bit of an intensifying storm with a little bit of lower pressure overall. Still moving west-northwest at 13 miles per hour, and I'll show you a unique thing that happened today where the center of circulation actually kind of jumped northward, which has some implications for the eventual track of the storm. Um, so you can click that and then get the uh, official information. A lot of good information here. Again, the National Hurricane Center is your primary source for where you want to get information. They are the experts. They're professionals. They, they've done this many. Uh, they've, they've been to this. They've seen this movie before. They've been to this uh, you know, circus before. They know how these things work, and they're going to provide the best forecast that they can to inform uh, the United States. So this is the infamous cone of uncertainty you'll see. Uh, currently, this intensity forecast has uh, Dorian staying a tropical storm as it treks over Puerto Rico no longer expected to to really interact with the eastern part of Hispaniola very much uh, to trek over Puerto Rico and then go up into the southwestern Atlantic into the, uh, the bath water of the Bahamas very warm deep water and then eventually recurve out somewhere in the eastern United States uh, potentially going anywhere in this zone if I whip out the, the color here you know anywhere in this zone needs to kind of be aware even up to even up to the carolina coast uh, depending on how dynamics play out and i'll show that in just a minute uh, needs to be at least be paying attention to the storm to see where it eventually goes uh, again this is a cone of uncertainty up to five days out there's no telling where in this cone dorian may may lie um, it's kind of thrown as a curveball today and we'll explain why in a second so we'll see what we'll see what dorian continues to do so jumping over to the uh, infrared satellite earlier Today we were looking at the visible satellite imagery and you saw something that we like to refer to as transverse banding if we go out here which is, indicates some turbulence so where the uh, spiral shape of Dorian is you know kind of looking in here you can make that out you have these bands that are perpendicular you have these cirrus clouds and clouds that are kind of perpendicular to the flow that they're embedded in creates kind of eye candy on satellite uh, it means that there's you know healthy outflow there's a little bit of turbulence in the air just a unique satellite feature to kind of point out um, but kind of show that Dorian was, you know, kind of breathing earlier and kind of got his act back together today after having a, a day yesterday where it was just kind of a disheveled mess. Um, after it crossed over uh, Martinique and uh, uh, so Guadeloupe here, Dominica, um, Martinique, and then down here in St. Lucia and Barbados. Last night it was over Barbados, and if you notice, it's way up here now. It was forecast to kind of track this way, but the center has relocated up, and I'll show you on radar. Where that new center is um, but some interesting things happening today i'll animate this so it plays back while i'm talking here but um, it's been a, an active day for the storm it's kind of reorganized itself and uh, jumped to the north which has pretty big implications for the track the farther north it is the easier it is to get over Hispaniola and uh, the puerto rico area unscathed and enter the southwestern Atlantic where there's warmer water and it may enter a more favorable area for some intensification something we have to watch very carefully Jumping over to the infrared satellite, you can see kind of a similar situation. You can see these uh, the bands of clouds going out, this outflow. You can see this thunderstorm activity kind of collapses and then builds again. These vibrant colors are representing cold cloud tops. 
that are um, you know shooting way up into the atmosphere and are very powerful thunderstorms that kind of give the the whole storm energy to continue to fuel itself and um, and go and you know when the sun goes down some of this uh, activity kind of collapses and then you'll have these bursts and that's kind of been the story of Dorian's life so far is these pulses of convection and then it kind of dies down so it's spending all of its energy trying to fight off some dry air in the eastern Caribbean and a little bit of wind shear so it's it's spending all of its energy doing that and therefore the intensity has been held in check because it's not been in a uh, prime area for intensification. That's certainly good news for Puerto Rico, still recovering from Hurricane Maria a couple of years ago, of course, um, as Dorian continues to make its way um, toward the uh, island nation there. So jumping over to the radar, this is actually radar out of Martinique, this island, uh, with population of about 375,000 or, or more. I mean, these are very populated islands out here in the Lesser Antilles. And something interesting we can note here, the radar is looping and it's showing um, as Dorian was moving away from the area, but you can make out up in this area, right at the start of the loop, you can kind of see a, a, what we would refer to as an eye life, an eye like feature. Um, this kind of a closed in air area there, the, the bands of thunderstorms showing that, and that's the new center of what Dorian is. Not super organized, but still a little more clear than it was last night, um, of course. It was over Barbados area last night. So Barbados is down here. I don't want to X them out. I want to circle them. I don't want to. There we go. So um, Barbados is down here. St. Lucia here. It was forecast to kind of clip the southern part of St. Lucia and go up here. Instead, it kind of got here. The mountainous terrain in some of these islands. There are some some high mountains. Um, and with Dorian being such a small storm, it kind of ripped it apart and caused it to reorganize and jump several uh, hundred miles about. What is that? About 80 to 100 miles to the north. And I'm um, causing it to to reform. So the radar gives us a better look at the inner st uh, structure and core of the storm. So that was kind of an interesting thing to note. On the comments here, Teresa, see, uh, does, just doesn't seem as organized as St. Andrew. <laughs> yes, the Hurricane Andrew in 1992. Yeah, it's certainly not as organized. Thanks for the the question, Teresa. Um, thanks to anyone who's tuning in. Just doing a quick live stream update on Tropical Storm Dorian. Have a couple more tabs to go here. Want to keep it pretty brief. Um, and we'll see how the, the storm continues to develop. But yes, certainly not as organized. Um, it doesn't look as threatening right now. This, uh, the satellite image earlier today, if I go back over here, looked a lot more threatening than it than it actually was. It looked, you know, kind of had that look of a tropical cyclone, but it just really was an organized, a disorganized mess underneath. So that's certainly good news. Um, we'll have to watch when it gets over the Bahamas with some very uh, warm, deep water. We'll have to see what it does. And speaking of the eventual track, I showed you the track of the National Hurricane Center. I'll end on that slide again because that's the, the official forecast track. But these are two sets of ensembles, so you have a bunch of different models that run with different initial conditions. So uh, this, you know, one member of the, of the model has a slightly weaker Dorian at the start. Another one has a slightly stronger Dorian at the start. And you kind of run all those together and take the average to get an idea, an average idea of where we expect the storm to go. And I believe... I think it was actually this one. Um, I was looking on Twitter earlier at some of some of the some of my colleagues and people that I follow. There was an, something called initialization error where the model didn't start off where Dorian actually is right now. So it initialized the storm incorrectly. So therefore, the model output is you, you can't really trust it because it didn't initialize where the storm actually is. Um, so just keep that in mind. You know th these model runs do the best with the information they have. Sometimes the information kind of gets skipped over on a, a model run. These run you know every four to six hours. Um, or around it's a ballpark time or you know six to eight hours for for the european maybe um but uh, you know, something to keep in mind the, these models do the best they can with the information they have the hurricane hunters give us new information that gets ingested into the models and then it produces a different solution another reason why you shouldn't trust one run and you should always you know take an average of what all the models are doing each model has some biases some pros and cons so you have to use them all as a tool to forecasting they are not a forecast the uh not a forecast themselves instead it's a um you know a tool to use in the toolbox of a, of a meteorologist where you can kind of use that to to look um, anyway off of my soapbox for a second um the gfs ensemble here i'll start with this because there's a little bit fewer lines to look at a le less information to process and um here these all have you know traversing puerto rico over here and then going up into the bahamas um, and then kind of curving into Florida. And we'll, I'll show you why that curve is taking place in a couple of minutes when I click over to the, uh, the actual model output itself. 
But uh, you know, you notice here you see some of these recurving into eastern North Carolina, and I'm not saying that's going to happen. That's just one model output, but that is showing that anywhere along the east coast here is still in play for a tropical trouble come this weekend because depending on how the dynamics evolve over the Atlantic Ocean will depend on where Dorian goes. So no one's out of the woods here if you are, you know, even even southern Florida is still not out of out of the woods. I'm talking the, the, the uh, Florida Strait and like Key West down here. Um, Dorian could still kind of shoot over this way. So we have to just keep in mind that the storm is not fully evolved. The dynamics that will steer Dorian are not fully evolved so things can change. Going back to look at the European really quick, same thing, there's a lot more information and they pop up this way. They go to the western part of Puerto Rico. Again, I think Dorian's actually over in this area, so it's a little misleading because they're not um, um, initializing where they should be. So it, I think this is the sweet, this is the 12Z European ensemble. So we'll have to look later tonight when new ensembles go out. So I'm actually gonna skip over this part because I think this model data is kind of skewed in that direction. Um, Wanda asks, why are we always booked into Florida, Puerto Rico, or the beach when these storms form? It seems that way, doesn't it, Wanda? Um, it always seems to coincide with plans. It is Labor Day weekend coming up, so that's certainly a big deal with people being at the coast, a very popular destination for Labor Day. Uh, something we'll have to keep in mind. Uh, for North Carolina, I'm not sure. Where where are you booked? Oh, you said Florida, Puerto Rico, or at the beach. Hopefully, um, it continues to steer away. Unfortunately, with, with each kind of set of guidance that comes in, it is looking more like a, a threat to the eastern seaboard, so something we have to watch. But I wouldn't cancel plans just yet. Uh, something to watch. It still has to survive its trek over Puerto Rico and Española, and uh, get there's still a possibility that it could succumb to the dry air and the wind shear, so it's not as certain that it's coming to the coast, uh, but certainly something to keep in mind if you're making Labor Day weekend plans. Which track do you get to visit? Oh, it's, it's funny, Teresa, talking about the many options you have that could be at risk for, for Hurricane. Thanks for tuning in, Braden. I see where you just joined. Uh, for anyone joining, just doing a quick recap of the day's events of Dorian and kind of looking ahead for the next couple of days as we deal with another tropical cyclone um, coming toward the United States. It still has to survive its trek over or out of the Caribbean, but we'll see what it does after that. And speaking of that... I'm going to pull up some model guidance here, and what you were looking at here is the is the GFS, but it's called the GEFS. It's the Ensemble version, the Global Ensemble Forecast System. I believe that's correct. Don't quote me on that uh, acronym. Um, so we're looking at 500 millibyte, 500 millibar geopotential height. So basically, for for lack of um, better term here, and for the sake of time, just see the blue areas as areas of lower pressure areas of the warm color, the, the warm color as higher pressure. And I'm gonna turn off this tool tip here so we can see what we're looking at. And um, so here's Dorian down here. So this is an ensemble package. So it's an average of a bunch of different members. So all those little lines you saw, the spaghetti plots, these are kind of average into what they think the storm's going to be doing at a given point in time. So some features we have here, this is an area of lower, a broad area of low pressure, not a tropical system up in this area. Here's Dorian down here. And um, what we'll have to watch is what happens up in the southwestern Atlantic in this area, and that will determine where Dorian eventually goes. So I'm going to clear off this uh, telestration there, and I'm going to go forward. Each time the image moves, it's going forward six hours. Dorian is approaching Puerto Rico down here, if you've lost sight of it. Looks like it weakens a little bit, and then it uh, gets over or out of the Caribbean, and then this something interesting happens. This area of low pressure that's much more broad over the Bahamas kind of uh, interacts with Dorian here, and Dorian's now over here, and what it's going to do at some point along the way... Uh, okay, what am I trying to say here? There are other dominant features of the atmosphere that steer tropical cyclones. Sometimes the tropical cyclones become the dominant feature themselves. Dorian will not be strong enough yet to do that, so it's still going to be um, susceptible to what the other parts of the atmosphere in the area are doing. So that probably made no sense, but in my in my head it did. Basically, Dorian's going to be weak enough that it's going to be steered around much easier. So with this, Dorian is going to pinwheel around this low pressure toward that area, and then you see this area of orange. I want you to keep an eye on that as I go forward in time here. And 
what happens is this orange area begins to build. It gets kind of more vibrant. It builds and it builds and it gets, you know, even stronger. We have a really strong ridge building here. And that kind of, that's a big stop sign for Dorian. So the, the low pressure cannot, you know, uh, undercut a ridge or anything. So we have what we're left with is Dorian up here in this area of low pressure as it's going up the east coast. It kind of blocks it in and pushes it toward the eastern United States. So um, that was a very rough and crude overview of the of the dynamics there. But basically with Dorian down here, we have to see how strong this ridge builds and that will determine how quickly it shifts over to the west or how far north it is. Um, the scenario of it kind of turning more to the Carolinas is possible. It's possible it could go toward Georgia. It's possible it could go more toward southern Florida. There is still the possibility even that it could um, come up and just barely miss and recurve back out to see if the ridge is weaker. So it's something we have to watch. Of course, Dorian still has to get out of the Caribbean and um, to closer to us to be able to understand what the storm is eventually going to do. And just to uh, point that out, I want you to focus on this area of the Bahamas as I go over to this next page here. So I'm gonna click in three, two, one, and I'm gonna overlay that same thing down here. So the Bahamas is down here. That's a lot more ocean heat content is what we refer to it as. So it's not just that the water is warm, but it's a lot of deep water that's very warm. So Dorian will be able to draw on some very deep water that's very warm. It has a lot of heat content. It's a lot of energy and fuel for the hurt or the tropical cyclone at that point. It is very possible that Dorian could become a hurricane and intensify a little bit when getting over that bath water, um, in air quotes, uh, over the Bahamas. There's just a lot of warm, deep water there that is a lot of fuel for, for the tropical cyclone. So um, you can see in the, the Western Caribbean, there's also a lot more, and even in the Gulf over here. But Dorian will not be in those areas. It will be somewhere in the southwestern Atlantic. So just another caveat to the, to the forecast, another uh, kink to throw into the plans of Dorian, uh, depending on where it goes. So I'm going to kind of wrap up here. That was kind of a scatterbrain overview of everything. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, what we're dealing with is a, a moderate strength tropical storm approaching Puerto Rico from the uh, southeast. It is moving in uh, sometime tomorrow. should be approaching Puerto Rico and uh, making a landfall on the island and then uh, getting over Puerto Rico and again, I don't think I mentioned it here, the elevation of the mountains, it's still pretty mountainous on Puerto Rico, but uh, compared to Hispaniola, it is not anything and will likely not play as big of a factor in weakening Dorian. So we'll see what happens with that. After it gets past Puerto Rico, it's kind of going to be in this uninhibited area where there's a little bit of wind shear, but how it interacts with other features in the atmosphere, there's going to be an area of low pressure down here kind of steering it. And then there's going to be a high pressure up here, which is going to be rotating in this general direction and they kind of just act as a conveyor belt to feed it toward the uh, in the general direction of the United States. The United States impact on the eastern seaboard or Florida Peninsula is not it's, the chances non-zero. It can't be ruled out but it does look likely at this time with the way Dorian is headed and Florida is in the cone of uncertainty here for the official track from the Hurricane Center. So something to keep in mind. I'm going to do another update video when we have more information on the storm tomorrow as it approaches Puerto Rico. But for now, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, feel free to message me or um, tweet at me. I'm more active on Twitter with tropical weather because there's a lot more people that are smarter than me and know a lot more that they're talking about some tropical experts that I follow. Um, all of this, all of these uh, areas up here with the little hurricane logo you see are from Tropical Tidbits, a very great website. Um, the, the guy who makes those videos uh, is very, very smart, very intelligent when it comes to tropical cyclones and tropical weather. I definitely recommend following him. And uh, of course, the National Hurricane Center should be your primary source for official information. But uh, yeah, it's certainly going to be an interesting situation to see what Dorian does. And we'll see how it survives as it crosses over Puerto Rico over the next 24 to 36 hours. So that's going to be all for this video. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Uh, keep your eyes on the skies. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me.